Chris, speak on it. Listen, y'all, every day that we wake up, we need to understand that we live our eulogy out, okay? And I feel like death doesn't hit home until death hits home, right? Until something happens to somebody and then it's like all of a shock. Instead of living life like, I know that I'm meant to die on this level so that I can reach a higher level, right? That's the goal. We sit and live life as if we're never going to have an end when we are. Like the reality is that we are. And I feel like so many people deal with the fact inside of themselves that I don't wanna not be remembered. I don't wanna not be mourned over if something were to happen. But you make decisions every single day that's not conducive to that memory that you want to leave like every single day that i wake up i've come to grips with the fact that today could be my last day what would i eat today if today were my last day on earth who would i call today if today was my last day on earth because death is real death and hell is real no different than heaven is real but at the same time i need to make active strives and when I say the queen of keeping it real, like I'm not going to lie to you guys about anything. I've been deceived on so many measures and I feel like that's the worst thing that anyone can do to people. Like, don't deceive me. Just don't lead me on a blind road. No, what I want you to understand is today could be my last day. This message could be my last message. That's it, right? So if there was no more Chris Speaks, what have I done? Have I lived my eulogy how I intended? Is every day that I'm waking up, am I putting 120% into doing what God called me to do? And if the answer is no, I got some decisions that I have to make. I have some changes that I have to make. Last week, I got a call or actually a text from my mother stating that my biological father had passed away. How am I supposed to feel? No, some people, you know, have grown up with their father and they've been an active participant. I've never been in the same household as my father. My father was an NFL player at one point and never provided for me. And I understand that at a certain stage in life, you know, we make certain decisions and everything like that. So the forgiveness is there. I forgive you, you know, about the decisions that you made or did not make. But at the same time, I have to deal in reality. And I think that so many people expect us to deal outside of reality, but at the same time, death should bring us remorse. It doesn't for everybody. That's why you have to live this life, living out your eulogy. If somebody's gonna sit over my dead body and say, Chris was a bold woman. She spoke what was on her heart. She said on the mountaintops what God said to her in secret. I want that to be said because I actually lived that. Not because you had to find some nice words to say about me. No, I did that. I gave to the poor. I served when I was afflicted. No, I did all of those things that you would say over a dead body. And now this life has come to an end so that I can now meet my father. Because that is the end goal. We're living this life to live another life. This is not the end for us. But when you live this life like there is no more end, like there is gonna be another phase, you gotta understand that. It's some people living flagrant out here, okay? And I want you to understand that some people are not gonna mourn over you. When the casket dropped, that's it. There's no knowledge in the grave, you know? There's no remorse for some people. Some men, you have the opportunity right now to make it right with the woman that you hurt, the mother of your children, um, with your children who are actually, you know, living today. You got the opportunity, but pride stands in the way. And I want you to understand how Satan is running your life. No. In every situation that comes present in our life, I believe there's a lesson to be learned. There's a lesson. Some people who really care about you, they don't care about what you don't have. And for some men, for some women in your mind, my form of protection is rejecting them because I know they'll be okay. They'll be better without me, but you don't understand that every decision you makes, you make in life takes an emotional toll, a financial toll or whatever type of toll on somebody else, right? You're living this life as if you're the only one that matters. No, when you have a seed, 
when you have connected to a man or a woman with a boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, or wife, you're now connected to somebody else's spirit, man. And people are out here hurting over you. <laughs> I dealt with that. The first man to ever break my heart in my life was my father. I never had the opportunity to be in a relationship first, you know, with somebody I chose and they chose me and be hurt. I came into this world and the first person who, who broke my heart was my father. And there's no, you know, there's no coming back from it. This is what we deal in. I don't blame him. Listen, I blame Satan. But at the same time, I blame you after a while at, at a spiritual maturity that you got to break them curses. You got to get free. No, there is no coincidence that God would allow your gifts and talents to make you from a 6A, 6'9 man to be in the NFL and then chop you at your knees because you decided to run out of your kid's life. Listen, I'm not lying to nobody. I don't personally care how nobody feel. Listen, if you love somebody, wonderful. But you have to take into account collectively how you're living your life. How am I living today that affects my tomorrow? How am I living this morning that affects my night? This is what we're dealing with. For some of you men, for the women who you've wasted their time in their life, you owe them an apology. And before the casket drop, you better make sure you render it. God says to himself, don't come before me to an altar and render sacrifices when you have not made it right with your brother. For some people, that means making it right in your household, making it right toward the decisions that you made. So at the end of the day, people can give you a decent burial. No, some people are willing to help. Me, myself, you leave a situation, my father had no insurance. I'm an insurance agent and have been for years. I could have helped. I could have done something. We can work together, but your pride. But I don't care what you have or don't have. I've been in a situation when I had 50 cents to put on my gas tank before repossession, but I did it. But vulnerability and humility will speak and say, listen, I don't have it, but I need you. I need your help. You know how many people can come and help you in your vulnerable state versus you being prideful and shoving everybody away? They can't help at that point. I just want you to understand we don't get a do-over in this lifetime. We get one life to live. Every single day you awake, every moment on moment, understand this could be the end for us all. But what have we done? Have what we done will make a difference later on. Have we done some things in our lifetime that will be pleasing unto God that would allow us to make it in? My first thing to my mother was saying, I hope he got it right with God. I pray his soul is at ease. I pray that whatever it is that him and God needed to take care of was taken care of because I know on earth your business was undone. But I hope in heaven at least you arrange some things. Get your business straight, people. Tomorrow's not promised to any of us. Love you much. Mwah.